Okay, uh, good morning to everybody. Welcome to the OpenStack Infrastructure Management um, Play by Manage IQ. Hopefully you're all in a right session. I won't keep you too long before lunch. Um, quickly about myself, um, I work for Red Hat. I'm the product manager for the downstream product um, called Cloud Forms. Hopefully that's the last time I mentioned the word Cloud Forms. I was going to put a jar up here to put money in, but I haven't got any money. So um, if, I, if I do sell Cloud Forms again, do, uh, do hold me up to that. I run a blog called cloudformsnow.com, um, which, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be a very difficult uh, presentation. This. So I, I do run this blog here. Um, <laughs> actually, what I've been doing is um, I used to put automation and methods, and uh, as you'll learn in this presentation, what, Cloud for, uh, what Manage IQ is all about. Manage IQ um, is a cloud management platform. So we're going to get into what that really is all about. But um, if you go to that place, you'll find lots of interesting ways that you can use Manage IQ to, um, you know, to integrate with uh, IP address management systems, ticketing, service desks, and stuff like that. And that will all make sense very soon. I like to fly ready control helicopters. Um, anybody else do that here? Okay, cool. Let's have a chat. Um, I am a rugby coach, and I've got quite a few kids for some reason. So they're all mine, they're all my family, so um, they keep me busy as well. Agenda. We're going to talk about um, the history to Manage IQ. Manage IQ has got a great history to it, um, and it really sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, concretes why Manage IQ is so good and great and why you're all here. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about community and open source, what it means to Manage IQ. What actually is Manage IQ? Does anybody not know what Manage IQ is here? Good. So you're in the right session. Everybody else, you're going to hear what it's all about again. Um, when it comes to the demonstrations, that's a really cool piece because I'm going to show you um, some really good, um, interesting things that you can do at Manage IQ. With the underlined one um, being the real, you know, the real keynote thing here. I mean, there's lots of cool things going on in OpenStack today, but I think what's happening with Manage IQ in, uh, in its upcoming release in the next few weeks is you're going to be able to do something with OpenStack that nobody else is doing out there. Okay, um, and to just position that to you, a lot of people out there are saying. Yeah, the first kid on the block to actually get an installer working for OpenStack successfully is going to be uh, crowned king. I think that's old school. I think that actually, you know, what we can do with Manage IQ today, and you're going to see a demonstration of this, is not taking something and installing it, but actually scaling it out. So how do you actually scale out an OpenStack infrastructure on demand um, through you know, alerting, automation, manually, and so on? So we're going to show you that um, as well. There is no summary. That's pretty much where it ends. I'll take some Q&A um, at the end, hopefully, if we've got some time. So let's try and whisk through this. History. So we started in 2006. Like uh, most uh, things, you know, we started proprietary, closed source. Manage IQ Inc. was formed. Um, 2008 was the, uh, the first product release. It was called Enterprise Virtualization Manager. Um, and it was pretty much going after you know, the big virtualization vendor out there, which I'm trying very hard not to mention their name, okay, so again, hold me to that if I do. But um, obviously, we will get, you know, in the very early years, 2008, that's who, who you went after, okay, um, supporting and ma uh, managing their environments. And in fact, you know, some of the biggest vSphere environments in the world are actually managed using the downstream product, um, you know, better than that vendor can themselves. In 2012, and the proof in the pudding is, even at their own show, they awarded um, well, part of the award ceremony is, uh, is to obviously do the um, virtualization info stuff. Um, we got the uh, finalist award at 2012. In 2013, we added the, um, the overcloud tenant space provider. And I'm going to go into the difference between what an overcloud and undercloud actually is in the, in the next slide. But um, we added the overcloud provider to be able to manage your tenants, your instances, availability zones, and so on. We were also uh, working very hard in that year to, um, to open source the product and uh, you know, bring what we had engineered for many years and um, you know, closed source proprietary. And after the acquisition of Red Hat uh, you know, with Manage IQ, we open sourced it in 2014 and we held our first summit. It was um, nearly as big as this and uh, nearly as, as exotic a location. It was in Marwa, New Jersey. Um, and <laughs> 
and we, we, we had our summit. So we're going to be having more summits. In fact, there's some uh, interaction going on with the Manage IQ community right now after this session. So do please try and hunt that down. There's an open day um, on Manage IQ where you can do some labs and stuff like that this afternoon. Um, and then in 2015, which is actually now, uh, we added the undercloud provider. Okay. Does anybody know the difference between undercloud and overcloud? Yeah, good. Okay. Um, so in 2015, we ended up um, actually only a few weeks ago getting a Cody Award. Okay. So the downstream product actually got Cody Award. Where the previous awards um, at the aforementioned um, vendor show were very much about private cloud, the Cody Award is really interesting and very important for us because it's actually cloud management platform. It's CMP, which is what all of the other vendors uh, are, are trying to go after and uh, we won it. So the downstream, obviously, is where I am. The upstream has a huge amount of heri heritage to it, um, a lot of history, uh, and a lot of reasons why you should really get involved in Manage IQ. There is very little difference between the two. I can tell you that right now. Downstream, upstream, you know, the upstream is branded Manage IQ, the downstream is branded CloudForms. That's, that's the difference. OK, so um, as far as OpenStack, let's get back on track with OpenStack. So version support, how, how have we been playing? You know about the OverCloud provider that we introduced in 2013. Um, yeah, we've been doing, uh, here's my little bear saying hello. Um, we've been doing Grizzly um, since then, and then we've been going all the way through. We're going to be supporting Kilo as well. Kilo is where we start to introduce the undercloud capabilities. OK, and I'll tell you what undercloud actually is. So the community itself is made up of a number of people. Um, there's obviously different contributors to that. I'll, I'll go on to that in the next slide. But yeah, we've got seven technical leaders. We've got 35 developers. We've got huge documentation sets. I don't know um, the experiences you have with other open source projects, but Manage IQ has bundles and bundles of documentation covering every aspect of um, feature capability for it. There's um, lots of blogs out there covering it now. Um, and it's, it's a really vibrant, growing community. We've got uh, a good forum there where you can ask for help and so on. And I've got a slide at the end to, to list those off for you. Even internationalization is very important for us. So um, if you speak Japanese, anybody Japanese in the room? Excellent. So you guys get the first language um, after English. So uh, in the next release of Manage IQ, you get Japanese support um, for the UI. We obviously do QE and uh, yeah, each sprint, which will last about three weeks, uh, averages around about 200 pull requests. In fact, if you look at the feature set that is making um, the next releases of Manage IQ, you would argue that you know, how are we pulling it off? And there's so much capability. We're only speaking about OpenStack here today, really. But you know, some of the other features that are coming you know, down, uh, downstream or, or along the next few months, Azure support, containers, and so on. Right, so contributors. Red Hat's clearly the main contributor at the moment due to the acquisition of the uh, aforementioned company, Manage IQ. Um, but we also have um, you know, other contributors into the community, Booz Allen Hamilton, um, with their Project Jellyfish, which is a, uh, a cloud brokering UI that allows you to wrap on top of cloud forms the ability to do projects and costings and so on. Um, so th they've jumped on board, and they're, and they're producing lots of good stuff for us as well into the community. Right, for those who don't know what Manage IQ is, that's some of it, a lot of it. Um, interestingly, containers jumps out here as a big word. I didn't tell it to. Um, it just seems that you know, even the internet knows that containers is the uh, topic of the, of the moment. But um, we, you know, we support lots and lots of things. We support VMware, Red Hat, you know, uh, Microsoft, Amazon. So we support all the big vendors when it comes to um, you know, technology areas like vSphere. Red Hat Virtualization, OpenStack, EC2. We're onboarding things like um, uh, Azure soon. We, could, we do SCVMM. So you know, we're, we're managing VMs, instances, and containers at multiple vendor levels, multiple technology levels. Okay. We also have lots of interesting capabilities inside of the actual um, Manage IQ community um, release, which is you know, things like tagging. Okay. So tagging in most uh, product, uh, most communities or products um, is just the ability just to you know, put a tag on something. But how do you actually use it? Is it per pervasive or not? In Manage IQ, we can do really, really clever things with a simple uh, capability like tagging. Facebook, everybody uses Facebook. Everybody has smart cameras, smartphones. If you take a photo with your smart, uh, smartphone, behind the scenes, lots of metadata is being attached to that photo. Okay, you don't know it, but it is, right? So the GPS coordinates, the date and time stamp, the phone that was used, and so on. 
And when you take that photo and you put it into something like Facebook, it then does character res uh, well, signature recognition on it and tries to work out if you've got any friends. And if you do have some friends, it will try and recognize them for you. So how does that relate to Manage IQ? Well, Manage IQ has very similar capability. In fact, very sim virtually identical. We're able to go across your environment, uh, signature recognize everything, and then automatically tag them through policy state management. Why is that important? Well, because how many people out there name their servers using obscure names like you know, LDN for London and then T1 for Tier 1 and so on? Yeah? So you do that because those vendors force you down this route of being able to, you know, having to name everything in a particular way so you can manage it. Where with Manage IQ, we say, hey, why don't you name it whatever you like and just tag it and create this taxonomy that makes sense to you. In other words, Manage IQ, show me all of the Vancouver machines. That's it. That's what I want to know. I want to know everything that's Vancouver. And Manage IQ can go through all of the hosts, the virtual machines, the instances, the resource pools, the vApps, everything, and bring all of that data back to you because you use the word, you know, the tag, Vancouver. We have a service catalog um, inside of uh, Manage IQ that allows you to request new services. Um, so those services are heterogeneous in nature because that's exactly what Manage IQ is give, uh, bringing to the party for you, is that because we manage VMware, Red Hat, OpenStack, Amazon, as, uh, you know, Microsoft um, in infrastructures, you're able to create uh, heterogeneous bundles of applications inside of Manage IQ. Okay, so you know, it's very common for us to go and create a service that has got a couple of web servers sitting inside of EC2 with a bunch of database to backends sitting inside of Red Hat virtualization and then tying them together with you know, load balancer configs. And we can do all of that inside of our service catalog. We have some really, really cool features around inventory. And in fact, that's one of the big differentiators between Manage IQ and all of the other solutions that you see out there. I'm sure many of you know um, some of the solutions from other, uh, other vendors. Um, and I can tell you right now that all of those solutions out there started with provisioning. Okay? Every single one of them. Manage IQ didn't start with provisioning. It started with inventory. Because the most important thing to provisioning is actually um, inventory. If you have capacity, capacity performance utilization data, now you can actually use that data to drive your provisioning. So if you want to put um, you know, instances, uh, containers, virtual machines, whatever you want to call them, if you want to go and provision them in a, in a particular fashion based on things like you know, anti-affinity rules or based on cap and U data, capacity and utilization data, then you need to target inventory as your primary um, source first. If you just go straight into provisioning something, then you're not going to know where to put it. You're just going to say, hey, go and put it in this cluster and you deal with it. Manage IQ is capable of doing really clever things like saying, I'm provisioning a web server. Can you go and put it somewhere where there are no database servers? Okay. Again, using tagging. Okay. So you can use your tagging to tell Manage IQ, do not put these two items together. Now, how does it actually achieve that? And it achieves, it achieves that through the inventory. It's got really deep um, capabilities. Uh, you've maybe seen the word fleecing earlier on a slide, and there's some T-shirts we're giving away on the Red Hat booth, um, which also say fleecing on it. We're able to effectively fleece the workloads that you have in your environment and grab all of that inventory data. We're going to see that a little bit later on. So with that word cloud, you know, spouting lots and lots of things, and I urge you to look at that later and see if you can pick out anything that um, takes your fancy. What is Manage IQ really? Well, commercially, it's really a cloud management platform. Okay? So it brings a number of capabilities to the party, like self-service provisioning. Chargeback is a, is a core discipline of Manage IQ. So you know, because we can do that inventory and because we, because we concentrated on inventory first and we have capacity and utilization data, our chargeback is far more powerful than you see in a lot of other um, solutions out there. A good example of this would be if you're going to charge somebody for the allocated amount, then that's not very fair. I allocated you 40 gig of disk space. Well, I don't want to pay for the 40 gig because I only use 2 gig of it. But you can't, you can't do the two gig charging unless you've actually got capacity and utilization inventory, which we have. We've got change management capabilities. So we've, uh, we can do uh, uh, configuration management inventory, and then we can hook into something like Puppet or Chef and, and uh, do the remediation and the application. We've got 
massive amount of um, orchestration capabilities. So our orchestration capabilities are you know, Ruby, PowerShell, Perl, um, whatever takes your fancy, you can wrap it up, you can put it into our orchestration layer, and then we can automate that across your environment. So if you've got IT processes there that say, you know, you must enforce um, you know, domain controllers. Windows domain controllers are not allowed to be cloned at all. Has anybody ever tried to clone a domain controller? No? You should try it. Try it. Try it on your production system and see what happens. And uh, I can tell you right now that Manage IQ can actually put a policy on all your domain controllers okay, and stop them being cloned. Okay, so that in, 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 in the event that a super admin, in their wisdom, uh, who understands everything about virtualization and nothing about domain controllers, decides to do that task and then bring your entire environment down. So we can do that through the mixture of inventory, policy state management, um, and then we actually have the orchestration to be able to do actions against things like you know, cancel the task, clone a virtual machine, you know, start another one, you know, deploy a container, and so on. You'll see here the bottom three uh, stacks here. We talked a little bit about you know, virtual infrastructure management, uh, virtual infrastructures which we look after, like Red Hat virtualization. Um, and the next slide actually starts to talk about how virtual infrastructures and clouds, there's actually a fairly blurry line between that. But we also do physical. We've been asked for years and years and years. Yeah, Manage IQ is an amazing product and uh, community of um, capability, but can we not have that? Um, can we not have that feature set on physical? And we are now bringing that to physical as well because you know, we understand that consumers out there are not just literally running virtual workloads, they're running cloud workloads, virtual, and now actually we're mixing that with physical. Let's move on to um, this blurry line. Now, being OpenStack, I'll, I'll use the OpenStack analogy here, but um, you know, if you're a consumer coming into an OpenStack infrastructure, you're seeing pretty much what you see in Amazon for obvious reasons. Um, your service, you're, you're, you're requesting services, you're tenanted, and you're doing it on demand. You don't see the hosts. You don't see the underlying infrastructure that is actually running that OpenStack um, cloud. You may have a PaaS layer on there as well. You may have like uh, OpenShift, OpenShift veneer running uh, all your containers for you on top of OpenStack. But you know, what's underneath that OpenStack? Because at the end of the day, there are some computers in a data center somewhere presenting that all to you. And that's the virtual infrastructure, is that from an administration point of view, from an operations point of view, OpenStack is a virtual infrastructure. It's a bunch of compute. It's a bunch of storage, compute, and networking that needs to be managed, allocated, and, and, and uh, made available so that the veneer of the cloud can be presented to the users. So with that understanding, let's look at, a, uh, let's look at some sort of example here. So the common example would be, you know, you have an application, an application runs, you see it, it's on your iPhone, maybe on your laptop, but somewhere in the cloud, deep in that cloud, underneath that virtual infrastructure, through those hosts, into the storage layer, into the aggregates, there is a, there is a physical hard disk, okay? Usually mechanical, unless you've got lots of money and you're buying SSDs, but there's, there's some way, is there some way to tie back the application to the individual disk spindle. And why would you want to do that? Well, because you know, disks go down. Disks go down, and you may want to create a report that says, if I pull this disk out now and put a new one in, is there any impact to any applications? What sort of applications are running on this disk spindle? Now, a lot of vendors won't give you any visibility of that at all. And this is really where Manage IQ's inventory goes really deep into your environment, is that the more providers that you plug in to Manage IQ, the bigger the picture you get of your environment. And Manage IQ is very much, you know, and I've started alluded to this now, is it's very much provider-based, is that you plug in the OpenStack over cloud provider, you now see the tenant space. You plug in the under cloud provider, you now start to see the hosts that are running the, uh, the tenant space above that. If you plug in the NetApp provider, then you start to see you know, the disk storage subsystems that are actually presented to the virtual infrastructures. Okay. Everything's a provider. So using that, uh, that uh, example of, a, um, of an application to disk, you know, this is how complicated it's going to get. All right? If we look at containers, because everybody's uh, jumping up and down about containers at the moment, HR application is sitting there. It's a service. It's a service probably running inside of um, something like yeah, a PaaS platform like OpenShift, of course. 
Now, that service is constructed from a pod or pods, okay, which are container groups, effectively. So pods are made of containers, and containers are made up of images. But that's going down a route that doesn't actually get me to my answer. I want to know what disk this application is running on. And knowing what Docker image is running that container does not actually help me understand whereabouts it is in the, in the, in the infrastructure as far as an operations point of view. So let's go back a little bit. So the pod belongs to a Kubernetes node. Well, Kubernetes nodes belong to clusters. Again, that's a bit of a, um, a dead end there. But a Kubernetes node actually runs on something. It's not a magical piece of software. Um, it's pretty cool, though. Um, and uh, it will run on a physical machine, but it could run on a virtual machine. So let's stay on OpenStack. Kubernetes node running on software of a virtual machine that is running inside of OpenStack that is running on a node. And the nodes belong to regions, or they may belong to host aggregates and cells and so on. But that's still a dead end for us. The node actually is running on a piece of physical tin. Okay, so there's a physical server actually running um, the, you know, the KVM uh, hypervisor presented to OpenStack. Now we're down to two new routes. We can either go down a networking route and start looking down that way, but we're really after storage. So you know, that physical ser server has some storage connected to it. And that storage could be Red Hat storage, it could be NetApp, it could be whatever. And that storage has arrays and disks and spindles. So Manage IQ will actually give you this complete path from the HR application all the way down to that disk spindle through a breadcrumb trail, allowing you to see the capacity and utilization of each and one of those um, elements as you just step through it. You can automate those, orchestrate them. You can do actions against them, manage them. Okay, so like for instance, nodes, you can scale out more OpenStack nodes if the Kubernetes is um, running hot. Okay, so if, the, if, if Kubernetes is starting to say, hey, I'm running out of capacity here, I need some more capacity, um, you can now start to fire at OpenStack and say, hey, OpenStack, start growing yourself. Make some more nodes available to Kubernetes. Right, demo time. I've got a number of demos to show you. Um, I've recorded them just for safety, so they won't go wrong. I, I can guarantee you that. The first one's going to be about capacity and utilization. And in this particular case, you know, the question is, well, you know, how much capacity does my environment really have? And that's where Manage IQ will go across your environment. It will look across all your nodes, your hosts, your clusters, your resource pools, your vApps, uh, your pods, I mean, absolutely everything, and give you your capacity. And because we have that capacity utilization story, we can use capacity to do planning. Okay, so we actually have a capacity planner inside of Manage IQ where you can pick up artifacts. Um, being careful to call them artifacts because they're VMs, they're instances, they're containers, they're lots of different things. You can pick up these things and you can say, hey, if I pick up these things and put them over here, how many can I actually fit in? Question is, who's doing that today? Well, you know, some of the biggest engagements we're working on at the moment is actually migrations from the aforementioned uh, uh, vendor we don't speak about to OpenStack, which is, you know, so we're going with hundreds of thousands of virtual machines from a virtual environment into OpenStack using Manage IQ in a batch processing mode. So we'll analyze the source environment. We'll look at the um, utilization of those actual virtual machines okay, inside of their resource pools. There's a tip and a hint to who it is. And we take them and we put them into OpenStack. Now, again, Earlier, I talked about you know, if it's allocated a 40 gig disk, do we really want to take 40 gig from that source environment and put it into a, an OpenStack environment? Absolutely not. So you know, that's where Manage IQ is really clever. Because it has that utilization level, we can, um, we can actually look at the usage of that virtual machine in the source environment and say, it was allocated 40 gig disk, but it's actually only using 2 gig. So why don't we just double that up and make it four gig, just to be safe? And uh, when we throw it into OpenStack, we'll know that we're using you know, double the amount we need, but you know, not as much as what the vendor wanted in the, in, the, in the source environment. So that's capacity. But utilization is the second piece, obviously. You know, how much is it really actually utilizing? And we can see utilization not just at the overcloud level, like instances, OK? But we can actually see it at the undercloud level, like the hosts. So the real, the real hosts that are running OpenStack underneath. We can give you the CPU, the memory, and the disk I.O. of those hosts. We know when those hosts are actually running out of memory. 
And when they run out of memory, we can then do something about it. We can raise a ticket in your help desk. We can go and update the CMDB to say there's no space anymore. Um, or we can uh, do something really clever and say, why don't we scale it out? We've got spare compute here. Why don't we, why don't we, why, why don't we rob Peter to feed Paul? There's a, there's a vSphere environment here, underutilized. Let's reprovision some of that into OpenStack. OK, let's uh, break out of this second, if it works. OK, so this, uh, this one's uh, capacity and utilization. So we log in to manage IQ. And this is the, uh, the login you, you're presented with. And the landing page will be the, uh, the initial dashboard. Has everybody uh, downloaded Manage IQ already while you've been in this session? Really cool. OK, so what we're seeing here is we're seeing a cloud. We're seeing uh, a bunch of instances. So we're in the overcloud area. Here's an instance. It's going to run pretty quick, I'm afraid. But, um, Here's the inventory detail. You can see some of the really cool data on the right-hand side that I'm going to go into later called smart state data. Um, and on the left-hand side, we've got that breadcrumb trail relationship. So we see what provider it's in, what disks it's on, what hosts it's on, and so on. But I can quite simply click on monitoring utilization for this instance. And uh, as it's pretty new, I'll just set it to hourly. And it will bring back all of the CPU, the disk I.O., and the network I.O. Right? So if this... If this particular instance starts running hot, I can see it in Manage IQ. And then with the orchestration pieces of Manage IQ, I can then do something about it. You know, disk IO is running hot. Well, why don't we go and migrate it to a host where the disk, disk IO is a little bit um, more compatible? And that's where we can do this, is that we can actually compare a running instance against its actual undercloud counterpart. Okay, so never could you have done this before. Okay, you, you could always look at the CPU, memory, and disk, and so on from an instance. But now you can actually compare it to the actual running cluster, the, you know, the deployment role that it's running on, or um, the actual uh, individual host. So by looking at the CPU, we can see here that there was a spike um, in the instance, and that's obviously manifested itself on the, on the actual host as well. So here's our hosts, or the, um, nodes in OpenStack. And we can see here that you know, we've got three, three currently turned on. We're going to select one of the Nova compute nodes. And you'll see very briefly, there was a, you know, the inventory is very, very similar. Okay? So whether you're looking at instances, VMs, containers, we, we're constantly giving you the same look and feel to the instance. In this case, this is the node now. So you can see that the node is presenting CPU, memory, um, network I.O., the virtual machines. If I just move that out of the way so you can see that. You can see that uh, you know, the provisioning rate of virtual machines inside of this actual individual hypervisor running, on, uh, running inside of OpenStack. So the OpenStack cloud is being supported by a, a, an individual hypervisor, and that is actually able to tell us the number of provisions that it's done over a period of time. We can now, so we've done instance cap in you, we've done host, host or node cap in you, and now we're looking at cluster view. So we're now looking at the deployment role or deployment roles with inside of OpenStack, and we're looking at the Nova Compute one. And so we're able to select the Nova Compute one and then do exactly the same thing. Now we're going to see an aggregation of all of the cap and new data for all of my nodes inside of OpenStack. Okay. So you may have you know, uh, separate deployment roles uh, created for different clusters of use, you know, front office, back office, HR apps versus marketing, and so on. You can now choose the right place to uh, provision instances based upon the performance of each cluster. And you can see now down in virtual machines that the deployment rate is uh, we've had some spikes where the other host was being provisioning, was provisioning instances, but then at the same time there's another host in this um, deployment role that's actually taking some instances away and dropping off. So that's pretty much cap and you. Let's go back to the um, presentation. Yep, it's working. Um, so inventory. 
So inventory, we started speaking about you know, you know, the basic inventory that we're getting back, and you saw some of that in, if you were quick to look. You know, the IP address, the flavor stuff, all of the, you know, the basic characteristics of the, of the object we're looking at, whether that's a host. So the, if you're looking at host, you're going to see its IP address, IPMI data, serial numbers, the, the vendor, you know, is it a, is it a pro line or a UCS system or whatever. Um, but then there's um, the relationships. We've pretty much done the relationships now, haven't we? So you can see where all the relationships come in. Um, but a really, really, really cool stuff is this smart state, okay? Is that we're able to, um, and we can do this at an infrastructure level as well. That's why it's important today. It's not all about instances. It's also about the, the actual hosts. We can actually take um, in, in the example of a, uh, an instance, we can crack open an instance and then fleece all of the information from inside of it. Okay, so what does that actually mean? We can get your users, your groups, your applications, your patches, uh, files. You know, being, uh, being you know, predominantly uh, an open source community, you would have thought oh, it's all Linux. No, we actually do Windows as well. So we can actually get registry keys. Okay? So we can mount the, the SAM account databases with inside of a, a Windows virtual machine and fleece all the information from that. We can bring all of that data back into, um, into our VMDB. Okay, it's like a CMDB, but better. And we can get the contents of the files. Okay? So there's a couple of examples here I want to, I want to throw at you to, um, to show how this works. Anybody suffer from heart bleed or shell shock? Did, you, know, you guys get that? So Manage IQ, actually, within a few hours of all that being announced, put out some policies that you could go into your environment and go and scan your entire environment, whether it was you know, a, a, um, a vSphere environment or a Rev environment and so on. We could go across all of those environments heterogeneously and holistically and go and tell you whether you're actually exposed to um, heart bleed or shell shock. And the really cool thing here is that it didn't matter whether the virtual machines were on or not. Okay? So the, machi the virtual machines could actually be powered off in a powered off state. They could even be suspended. They could be, you know what? They could even be broken. Don't know, as long as not too broken, but um, they may be broken to VMware. But to us, we can still read them. As long as we've got that disk file, we can crack that disk file open, and then we can start um, traversing all of the structures within inside of that disk file, like the, the partition table, the file system, you know, the registries, and so on. And we can go and tell you whether you've got heart bleed. Why? Because we can read the RPM database. We can read the RPM database and we can tell you exactly what versions of shell you've got um, installed and then check that against uh, you know, an assessment. As far as contents are concerned, you, know, you may have an IT process that turns around and says something like, you know, we're not allowing root logon. Okay? That's quite a common thing. There's no root logon allowed. Well, how do you actually enforce that? Especially in a virtual environment, people are bringing virtual workloads in and out daily. You, know, you can't police that all the time. Unless you've got Manage IQ, of course. Because with Manage IQ, you can now create a policy that says, can you go across all of my virtual environment and go and collect all of the um, SSHD you know, comp files and then grab a particular value in there, root logon, and tell me the, the value of it. And if the value is yes, then I've got a problem. I'm non-compliant. But if it's no, leave it behind. Now, it's up to you what you do when you, when you, when you find yourself as non-compliant. Do you want to just report on it? Do you want to just send a, an email to your boss in a PDF format and say, hey, here's all the machines that were non-compliant for SSHD root logon? Or do you want to go and migrate them somewhere else to an environment that's more secure, go and quarantine them, shut them all down, go and open tickets in your help desk? And Manage IQ can do that. Because it's able to fleece at this level, this forensic level, um, it's able to pretty much do whatever you want in, in, in that area. But like I said, this is working at host level as well. And you saw that earlier. If you looked at the video um, of Cap and you, you saw the services that are running inside of OpenStack. We could see that Neutron was running, how many hosts are running there. That's all smart state data. So let's go and have a look at um, smart state in, in uh, working. Okay, log in again. So there's our dashboard. The dashboard you know, is made up of widgets. You can show pretty much any data we have in our database in pie charts, graphs, tables, and so on. So here's a list of um, instances in OpenStack. These are real OpenStack instances. We've selected one. 
We can see on the right hand side this, um, this smart state data. We can see power management and then below there you've got security and configuration. Yeah? So we've got list of users, we've got list of groups. If I select users, what am I expecting to see here? Well, I've got a count of 20 and there they are, all 20 users. Now if you work in a secure environment, would you not want to know if people were adding user accounts to your builds? Well, Manage IQ would know that because it will see it. So you can now create a policy that says if there's more than X amount of users or different, you know, or, or a list of users, tell me about it. Here's the list of applications. And you can see here, you know, there's cloud in it in there and cloud config. So we know every single application that is inside of every single instance that is spun up. Now, you know, instances are meant to be the same as their images, but you know, users are bad and they will add applications to your instances. They will change them. Okay? And Manage IQ can see that. Manage IQ will be able to see if a user consumer has gone into an instance and started adding software to it. Because we have, wow, that close, five minutes to go. I'm going to cut this short. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, pick up this data and we can actually do a drift comparison. So we can, we can actually compare the, uh, the data between one instance and its image. So if you imagine, in this particular example here, the instance is being, um, uh, we're adding to this instance right now, Apache, but the image doesn't have it, okay? So by cross-comparing the image with the instance, we can now create a report that says, hey, you know, um, you know all of these uh, virtual machines have got Apache installed when the image does not, for instance. Right, with um, only five minutes to go, I am gonna skip through. Uh, it's not even... Let's get to the scale one, because I think that's all what you want to see. Okay, so we can, we can scale OpenStack infrastructures. And yeah, there's a bit of positioning on this as far as you know, you've got, you, you got your, you got your um, provider, which is your under cloud provider, and the under cloud provider is going to give you visibility to the physical infrastructure that's making up the OpenStack cloud. Here it is here. We can see here on the right hand side, you've got nodes, five. There's five nodes available to the under cloud server. Doesn't necessarily mean you've got five nodes actually running OpenStack, it just means that there's five in the bucket. Now, this is deployment roles. So we've got two types of deployment roles in, uh, in, in function here. We've got the controller deployment roles and we've got the compute controller nodes, uh, compute um, deployment roles. And as far as compute is concerned, we can see all of the relationship data here as far as you know, what data center is it in, you know, how many um, instances are actually running inside of our deployment role that is called compute. In other words, the cluster that is actually OpenStack, how many instances are running there? And if I click on that, I then get taken to the instances. And that is, whilst it's a very simple example, it's very difficult to do because you're now tying the live running instances in the overcloud with the underlying hardware infrastructure in the undercloud. As well as down on the right hand side, you've got um, OpenStack status. So we're now starting to do best of breed management where we're not just normalizing all of the data across all of our vendors. We're actually saying, we know this is OpenStack. So we're gonna show you the number of services that are there, okay? So we're gonna show you, you know, what, what's going on inside of Neutron, what's going on inside of um, Nova. We selected the provider here and I've turned around and said, I wanna scale this provider, okay? And what you should see on screen here is that you can see the, the number of um, hosts in the pool are five um, with the, uh, what have we got? We've got controller and compute nodes currently running one each. So we've got one compute and we've got one controller. And I, what I've done is I've just changed the figure of the uh, compute nodes to two. So I want to scale manually from one compute node to two compute nodes. Right? And that's where I bring you back to, you know, Whoever gets the installer working is, uh, is going to be crowned king. This is way better. This is now taking an existing OpenStack infrastructure and just scaling it out manually with, what, two clicks of a button? Tell, tell me how many you want, and then sit, um, click scale, and then uh, Manage IQ will go and speak to the undercloud server, which in open source world is the RDO director. In the downstream, it's the Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux OpenStack director. So you saw some status messages going there. Here's our list of um, nodes. Remember there was five, there was always that magic figure of five, but there was only two running. One was compute, one was, one was um, Nova. Uh, sorry, one was compute, one was controller. Now you can see there's a new one, okay? So there's now a third node. So, you know, the time it takes to reprovision a bit of tin, 
you know, uh, physically and, 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 and install an image is how long it would take to actually scale. It's not uh, this quick, clearly. But um, you, can, you can go into the system and say, right, scale from one to two. It will speak to the audio director and then scale it. The other one I wanted to show you was quite simply the um, automatic scale. Because, you know, manual scale is pretty cool. But the real cleverness here is actually auto scale. Now, you've seen evidence of Manage IQ all the way through this presentation so far with its capacity and utilization capabilities. That, you know, when you put all of the features, functions of Manage IQ together, you can do this. And you can do it really easily. And this is why I included this now, is because I want to show you how easy it is to take OpenStack manual scaling into an automated fashion. So in other words, it's got to the end of the month. We've got credit card processing. Let's scale our environment. Well, that's automatic. You're not going to be sitting there looking, looking at your clock, going, oh, it's the 27th, let's scale. Why don't you let the system do it for you? So with, um, with automatic scaling, basically, you know, you've got your Nova compute roles here. You can look at the utilization. We've already seen this before. You get your CPU, your memory, your disk I.O. You know, what happens if that memory is running hot? What happens if the cluster is now starting to run out of memory? Well, we know that because we can see it. So can we, inside of Manage IQ, create a policy that says, if we go above 50% 50, 50 of memory, that we want to scale that cluster? And this is how easy it, um, you do it. You go and create an alert, and you basically turn around and say, for this cluster, if it goes above 50% of memory utilization, I want you to run something. And then that run something is the scale. Now, in this particular case, we're sending an email out the box. We're also putting it on the timeline. So when you look at the timeline, you can see all of these different tasks going on. And then you can actually do the scale itself. And that's the, the last one, which is highlighted. Uh, with that in mind, I just want to show you the timeline. And then I'm going to take, you, take, uh, take some questions. So there, there is basically the timeline. And we can see there, there's the scale. And if I click on the, the, the actual item in the timeline, so on May the 12th, a few days ago, uh, my OpenStack environment automatically scaled out another node. Why? Because I told it to on the alert. I said, if it gets more than 50% memory utilization, start scaling it. So I'll just go back here. So that was the scale out. We went from, you know, a number of uh, controller compute nodes with the audio, audio director integration as the under cloud provider, we then added more compute, more controllers. So the packaging of um, Manage IQ, how easy is it to work with? Quite simply, it gets delivered as a Red Hat virtualization image, OpenStack image, so you can run Manage IQ in OpenStack inside of Red Hat virtualization, plus the, uh, the one we don't mention. And then we got um, Hyper-V coming on board and Amazon, right? So Amazon. Um, will allow you to actually run uh, Manage IQ inside of it as a, as a native appliance, and then obviously Hyper-V. The release cadence for it, very simply, um, we have an obsession with chess, um, so we name our releases after grand chess masters. So Anand was first, we're now into Botvinnik, that's literally on RC3 right now. And that's where you can go and get it. Does anybody have any questions? Because we are now out of time, I'm afraid. A quick one. Um, the policies, can we use it to do other stuff besides auto scaling? Absolutely. So policies can be used to identify you know, vulnerabilities in your environment, to do compliance, mark things as compliant, non compliant. You can use policies to do auto tagging. You can use policies to stop tasks, you know, so uh, you know, like the domain controller example, um, or anti infinity rules. There's, there's, there's loads of built in, out of the box actions that you can do with policies. Like, suppose a host goes down. Move all the VMs to other hosts? Absolutely. That's yes. Yep. Okay. Evacuation. Yep. So evacuation, whether you're looking at... And the, 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 the key to understand with Manage IQ, it's about holistic management. So you know, if you're going to go and uh, evacuate a bunch of OpenStack nodes, then what about the clusters that are running uh, Kubernetes containers at the same time? Manage IQ will take you through all of those <coughs> steps and migrate them off to other hosts for you. Okay, anyway, I think we're uh, out of time. Um, there is the Manage IQ Open Day. I urge you, if you've got more questions, come and see us down there. You can download it. You can talk about it. You can read the documentation, and you can even contribute via GitHub. Thank you very much. <laughs>